Welcome to Easter Sunday and the fourth Sunday of COVID-19. We promised a long time ago that our first two Sundays back when we were able to meet in person would be Palm Sunday and Easter. But though this is a changed reality around us, it is still reality. And today is still Easter Sunday. Like nature itself, life emerges from the tomb, crawls out of the darkness, and we say, look, he is risen. And the crocuses and the caterpillars and the peas shout up in floral delight. He is risen indeed. Let us worship God. The call to worship. He was in the tomb. But the stone was rolled away. The darkness was complete. But one shaft of light defeated it. He was mourned by everyone. But he showed them new life. Are we entombed at home? We are not. We are waiting. Does the darkness seem too great? It is not. It is overcome. For the morning will turn to dancing. And, and the, the night, night to, God's to God's perfect, God's everlasting, everlasting day. day. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. Like the women who came to your tomb as the first day of the week was dawning and found that tomb empty. Like Mary who came to the tomb early on the first day of the week and found the stone rolled away. We have such good news to tell for you, Lord, have cast off your grave clothes and shattered the powers of sin and death but we have heard this news before. How often we have let our alleluias fall silent as we pass through the church doors. How often have we returned to our daily routine as if Easter changes nothing. How often have our actions belied the power of resurrection to transform our world. Risen Lord, forgive us for our half-hearted witness Free us from the bindings of fear or indifference or disappointment or disenchantment and fill us with the light of resurrection and send us into the world to proclaim in word and deed that we have seen the Lord. Friends, we have been forgiven. So let us believe the good news of the gospel that in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And now, as a forgiven people, let us have the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Welcome to 
children's time. Have you ever known anyone that has died? Or maybe a friend has moved away and you don't know when you're going to see them again? When I was re thinking of this story, I remembered my grandmother and when she had died. I was so sad because I didn't know when I was going to get to sit on her lap again or ever. Well, three days ago, we remembered that Jesus died on the cross. And after he had died, he was put into a tomb. And there was a big rock that was rolled in front of the tomb. But there was someone who was so faithful to him. And Jesus had been so kind to her that when she saw that the tomb had opened, or that the rock had been rolled away. She went inside and she started to cry. And she looked up to see that place where she thought Jesus should be lying. And she saw two angels. And the angels had asked her, why are you crying? And Mary Magdalene responded, they have taken my Lord and I do not know where they have placed him. And then she felt something. And so she turned behind her. And at the entrance, there was a figure. And she had thought it was a gardener or maybe someone who was taking care of the grounds. But then he said her name. Mary. And she knew it was Jesus. And so that sadness that she felt when she didn't see Jesus, just like the sadness that you probably felt when your friend had moved away, connected to the joy of seeing that person again. And this is the mystery of Easter. So I wonder if you have your rock with you. And everyone send in pictures of rocks. Because to me, this story, or the rock in the story, represents how sometimes we have barriers with Jesus. And it's difficult to talk to Jesus. Especially now, right, when things are so different. We're not going to school or we're not even in church. You're watching me on a video. <laughs> but Jesus is always there. There's no barrier. And that's why praying and listening are so important. So I often keep my rock in my pocket. And it helps me remember Jesus throughout the day. And sometimes when I touch the rock and I pass a daffodil, I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus, for the daffodils. Or sometimes when I'm struggling and I put my hand in my pocket and I feel my rock, I say, help me, Jesus. Help me to be kind and to know what you would do in this situation. And so keep praying. Okay? Keep praying. Jesus is always with you. So I hope you have a wonderful Easter Sunday. This is a geo. I like this very much because it has a sparkly inside. This is 
a sliver of one rock. Here are most of the other pieces to the rock. This is an undeveloped geode. What you see here are lots of minerals. Geodes are made out of minerals. Let us pray, and I invite you to repeat after me at home. Dear Lord, help us to remove the barriers that keep us from you. Help us to come to you in our times of sadness and in our times of joy. Dear Lord, you are our light and our salvation. Amen. The, the story was that uh... I knew that we had, I would, that Elaine and I had the capability of uh, putting out 50 meals between the uh, chili that I make as a backup uh, every month and that other stuff we could buy. I uh, proposed it, and uh, as uh, I think you saw, I figured that nobody would show up. In fact, uh, people either were determined to do this anyway or they trusted me enough so that uh, we had, in fact, 14 people, 14 dishes delivered, actually. There were some people did it as a couple, of course. Uh, uh, the Courtney's did it as a couple, and the Tom and Deb did it as a couple, and that kind of thing. But anyway, that's, um, you know, that was the great uh, experience, was to see uh, people showing up and doing up. So all that uh, worked out uh, very well. It was a wonderful experience. We, we had pledged 50. So uh, we prepared 50 in the kitchen, in the church kitchen, and so forth, wiping up all the time and all that kind of stuff. And we delivered them up there right at 4 uh, p.m. We took off right back to the church because we had a lot of extra people who were very generous and delicious meals, I'll tell you. Anyway, they certainly looked at it and they smelled it. Anyway, so then I called up Billy Joe Owens, who is uh, coordinating the whole thing, and asked her, what we needed to do with uh, the surplus that we had. She checked around, took a while to find out where the need was and found out that most of the homeless people were housed up at the Econo Lodge. So then we just made up our stuff and we uh, made up the extra meals. We had 47 of them finally made up and uh, drove up to the Econo Lodge. We managed to get them in and get the door open and get them in, and then I took off. And so it worked that way. So we ended up with a total of 97 meals uh, delivered. Yeah, well, I like to look for the hand of the Lord in things anyway, and so I like to take some signs and so forth anyway. And as I told you in an email, in fact, the name of the person at the Econo Lodge, who was the only person in charge, the only one to help me, was Faith. I think uh, it's going to be hard to avoid. Yeah, May 2nd is the next time. Uh, and then uh, they have other possibilities, other slots, other days when they can accept meals when Billy Joe sees a need there. 
and so forth anyway, but um, I will leave that up to other people in the church to figure out whether they want to arrange another sort of large delivery of these um, uh, of these meals. We have uh, enough of the, the styrofoam takeaway boxes to pack them up if anybody else wants to do it. chapter of John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and he went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and he saw the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, but it was not lying with the linen wrappings. It was rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw, and he believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. She saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabbani. And Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. 